All right, welcome back to the channel. It's your boy, Fanon. And in this video, we are going to talk about some things that have been said about Errol Spence Jr. after Terrence Crawford makes a post. And let me just put it this way. Terrence Crawford fake fans show their true self just like I said they would as they absolutely dump on Terrence Crawford for easily the biggest achievement in boxing this year. Let's talk about that in this video. All right, welcome back to the channel. It's your boy, Fanon. And in this video, we're going to be in the 147 pound division where we're at the year's end. And there's a lot of talk about awards going on, who's the fighter of the year, what the fight of the year is, newcomer of the year, knockout of the year, trainer of the year, all kinds of different things going on. And Terrence Crawford spoke out about what he believes he should win and points out the reason why. And Fake Terrence Crawford fans expose themselves by making arguments against Terrence Crawford the way that I told you that they would when uh, Terrence Crawford actually need his, needs the support from them. Now, before I get into that, though, let me welcome you back to the channel. If you are new to the channel, please accept my invitation to hit the subscribe button. Hit the bell icon so you can be notified of when we release more videos. And if you're a longtime subscriber and supporter, thank you guys so much for your support. Thank you immensely uh, to the pullout bandit for his um, support in the super thanks. It is a great way to support the channel. And yes, I did the Bob Aram video that you asked for. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. But Let's get into this. Also, thank you, Matty Yole, as always. There's a couple other new people that supported in the Super Thanks. In my next video, the videos that I do tomorrow, I'm going to make sure that I give you guys your shout out, shout outs then. But please understand, I greatly appreciate it. But let's get into this. So there's been an argument going on for several years about Terrence Crawford and Errol Spence and who was going to win that fight who was going to, whether the fight was going to get made, what was the barriers to making the fight, all of those type of things, right? During that time frame, there was a lot of people that were claiming that they were Terrence Crawford fans, taking all kind of, uh, throwing all kind of insults at Errol Spence Jr. And I said the entire time that most of those people were not Terrence Crawford fans. What they really were were PBC and Errol Spence Jr. haters who were just looking for somebody to support uh, in against Errol Spence Jr., who at the time was top five on most people's pound for pound list. Definitely, uh, you know, a three belt, um, a unified champion for years, three belt holder for a while. Right. And so people were all on the Terrence Crawford bandwagon. And I said the entire time that these guys were not Terrence Crawford fans, a lot of them. And now they've shown their their true colors, because when Terrence Crawford makes an argument that he should be fighter of the year for fighting Terrence, for fighting uh, Errol Spence Jr., there's a whole lot of people all of a sudden that were supporting Terrence Crawford all day. They don't want to give him that. They want to give it to Monster anyway, and they completely disregard the win that Terrence Crawford had against Errol Spence Jr., which I find very, very interesting. Now, first, let me tell you what Terrence Crawford said, where Terrence was on Twitter and said that he was the only person to fight, a, to beat a top five pound for pound fighter and become the undisputed champion. For me, I have to tell you that I was really kind of like stuck in between Terrence Crawford and Monster Inouye. Monster Inouye is a, became undisputed champion this year, same way that um, the same way that Arrows Terrence Crawford did. But Terrence Crawford, I have to admit, did it in a much more difficult fashion against a fighter that was uh, considerably more well-respected than both of the fighters that Monster in a way fought combined. And that is Steve Fulton Jr. and Marlon Topalis. And if you look at the last fight, and this is something I didn't realize until somebody pointed it out to me. If you look at the odds for the fight between Monster in a way and Marlon Topalis, 
it was literally, uh, it was it was literally like twelve to one odds in favor of Monster Inouye. I do believe he was a minus fifteen hundred, and Marlon Tapanopoulos was a plus twenty three hundred. That is a mismatch on the uh, on the odds. A mismatch where if you look at the odds for Errol Spence and Terrence Crawford, they were very virtually even plus one plus one fifty minus two hundred something like that. Right. So who do you give credit for more two fights where you're the big favorite in them? Or do you take one fight where, you know, it's an even money? Look, if somebody said monster in a way. I wouldn't have a problem with it. Uh, honestly, man, for a while, I was like, yeah, man, I'll probably give it to Monster in a way. But then I thought to myself, I was like, no, the more significant, the significantly more um, impressive win uh, and significant win goes to Terrence Crawford, even though he only fought one time this year. If they had moved, and I thought to myself, if they had moved um, David Avenition up until January and it was this year, would that may have made a big difference to me if, say, uh, David Avenition fight was in January and the Errol Spence Jr. fight was in was in November or was in o October or November. No, it wouldn't have made any difference to me. I don't think that that would have made it any more impressive a year. So nah, I got to go with Terrence Crawford. But you have people out here who are claiming they were Terrence Crawford supporters who are now saying that Errol Spence Jr. was never even a top five fighter. Terrence, I mean, Errol Spence Jr. was just a hype job. He was never that good, right? So what do you see from them? You see them getting back on exactly what they always were, which just this just um disrespecting Errol Spence Jr. and what the PBC has done. If you look at some of these guys pound for pound list that they put up on Twitter, literally the only American fighter, only PBC fighter on the entire list is Terrence Crawford. Hey, ter matter of fact, there's none on the entire list. The only black person that was on the list on some of these guys is Terrence Crawford himself. So like I said a long time, for a long time, Terrence Crawford is basically the Joe Frazier, was, definitely, was basically the Joe Frazier to... Muhammad Ali, where where as long as they were trying to and as long as it was Joe Frazier was up against Muhammad Ali and they could hope and pray that Joe Frazier would beat Ali, then they were going to really support uh, uh, Joe Frazier for that. But once Joe Frazier goes away and fights somebody else and is up matched up against somebody else, either in the ring or outside in these pound for pound comparisons, there's going to be no support for him. And that's what happened with Terrence Crawford. For me. Terrence Crawford, by a nose, is my fighter of the year. Brian McIntyre is, in my opinion, the trainer of the year. And those guys deserve those accolades for doing what they did. And all the talk about where whether or not somebody thinks Errol Spence had a longer layoff, had a long layoff, or whether he was not well going into the not going into the fight, whether he had a bruise, a, a hurt rib, or dehydrated. None of that stuff should matter because none of that stuff is, is Terrence Crawford's responsibility, nor is it his concern. He goes in there with a fighter that is in that ring at that time and he beats him. I'm sure if I go through Marlon Topolis or I go through Steve Fulton Jr. and I say, well, you know, Steve Fulton Jr. is not a knockout puncher. Steve Fulton, um, uh, Marlon Topolis is not that. They had to go all the way over there to Japan to fight him in a completely different time zone, eating completely different food, away from home, and, uh, and, and something that they did, weren't able to get adjusted to. We I can find all kinds of reasons to discredit anybody. But anyway, so I just wanted to point that out that, man... I wish we had better boxing fans, especially a better American boxing fans that would really and truly rather have somebody from Japan win and so and so that they can talk about the downfall of all of American fighters, uh, all of American boxing, when the truth of the matter is the only downfall in American boxing is within a specific demographic that you really want to win badly, but they all ran over there to the UFC. Anyway, that's my take on the matter. Please let me know what you think in the comment section. And with that, I'm out. Deuces.